Hey there guys, uh, thanks for joining me on my channel, Real Simple Mushrooms. Um, today we're going to get into the first part of a multi-part series on the whole journey from spore all the way to mushroom. Um, so this is going to be the first video in the series, it's all going to be about germinating spores on agar. Uh, once you get into mycology and grow mushrooms, agar is really, really important. You're going to want to learn this at some point if this is something you want to take seriously. Um, there's three different ways you can usually obtain spores, and that's going to be spore prints, spore syringes, and spore swabs. And I'm going to go over all three kinds, how we put them to agar to germinate them. I'm going to go over the agar recipe that I personally use and have the most success with. I'll do another video on actually how to make that recipe. It's very cheap, very easy, very simple. I'm also going to go over the tools and supplies that you'll need to, to do all of this. Um, so yeah. Thanks for joining me. I hope you guys learned something and let's get into it. Okay guys, so we're gonna go over a couple of the things that you're gonna need um, to do this. Number one, agar dishes. I use what's called a potato dextrose agar. This is just water reserved from oily potatoes and agar. I'll get into that in a different video. Uh, you obviously need your spores. Here we have a beautiful, big, beautiful spore print on a very, very large specimen. Um, I've got a spore syringe. See all these little things in there? Those are all spores floating around in there. And, I, and then I've got a spore swap. No spores in the end of that. I'm going to be using the scalpel. These you can get on Amazon. I'll put a link to them in the comments. Um, you might want a clean swap. Uh, we're going to go over how to use this small little hot flame to sterilize the blade. Paper towels, 70% isopropyl alcohol. Now we use 70% because 99 evaporates too fast, and you want the alcohol to have time to do its job to kill any germs. All right, and then of course gloves and a mask. Um, one important thing you want to do before you start working with any agar is turn off any fans that might be running in your house, unless it's a float, float rod, obviously, um, because there's tons of microscopic uh, pet dander and skin cells and mold spores floating around in the air. You don't want that landing inside your plates, right? So you want to turn any fans off, give all that stuff a chance to fall to the ground to the surfaces right and then you're going to take your iso and you're going to clean all of your surfaces and all of your tools and that's what i'm going to do now um, i'm using a flow hood for this you can use a still air box i'm not going to go into the details on still air boxes right now because there's a hundred videos out there on youtube that are very good i'll find a good one i'll also link that in the comments um, I worked in a still air box for years before I invested in a flow hood, so you don't have to have one of these to do this, but you do have to have a still air box and, and practice good sterile technique. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to get all this cleaned up and we're going to get started. Okay, now that you've got everything cleaned, um, we're going to get into the first one, and it's going to be the spore swab. Uh, you can find spore swabs in all kinds of websites all over the place. Um, swabs are great, they're very easy to use. Really important thing when working with agar that you've got to remember is you don't want to really hover too much over the plate, right? Um, when you have this open, things can easily fall in there and contaminate it. You want to avoid that. So, one thing I like to do, I have an alcohol soaked rag here. So when I take the lid off, I put it on here. I don't have to worry. I know this is clean. You know, nothing living on there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these swabs out. But all we're going to do is take this swab and just streak the plate with it. And hopefully we'll get a couple of different groups of spores that germinate and grow mycelium out here. Now again, this agar mixture I use is just simple potato, water, and agar. Uh, I've had an incredible success rate with it. I've tried light malt extract, I've tried sorghum, I've tried grain water, I've tried it all. 
the simple potato agar works like 99% of the time on just about everything I try to germinate. So and I'll do another video on how to actually make this. It's really simple. Um, so yeah, let's get into this out. We're gonna take, we're gonna open the spores. Oops. Don't be afraid of the alcohol, use a lot of it. Best thing you can do is use this stuff. I work wet sometimes, I use a lot of it. Get your arms, everything, right? Okay, so again, you now you gotta be careful not to cover it over this plate. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take this cap off, set that here on that cleave, all right? I'm gonna put it to the side, so you don't wanna cover over this thing at all. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to lightly just streak the plate with them while I'm rotating it. And I can see a couple spores coming off there. Alright, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to push that back. I'm going to put the lid on. There you go. That's it. Okay, well now the other way to do this, alright, with a swab. And a lot of people swear by this method is we're going to slice a piece of this off where the spores are and we're just going to put it on the plate, right? So we're going to take our scalpel. That's nice and sterile. You don't have to worry about that right now. After you use it once, it's no longer sterile and I'll have to clean it. So now what I'll do here. Slice a little bit of this off. Place it right there. Okay. And that's the two ways you can use a spore. You could streak it, you could slice it off. Some people even just throw the whole damn q tip in there. Wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, so that's the spore swab. Okay, guys. Now we're going to talk about the spore syringe. So when you get these, usually the spores are pretty clumped up. Um, you really got to shake these things really good to break them up. Um, alternatively, you could, if you have a reciprocating saw, you could strap this to the blade of a saw and kind of hit the trigger a couple times and shake them up. But one thing I like to use, one of these massage guns for the muscles, these are great. You can just And that breaks up all those chunks of spores super nicely. And now, I'm gonna always give a little squirt on this plate, you get a bunch of spores in there. Um, and, and they won't clog the syringe or anything weird like that. I'm gonna wipe down the syringe. All the little gaps in here. I'm gonna wipe down the packaging for the needle, even though the needle's sterile, you still wanna wipe all this down. Packaging that came in is not sterile. And then again, I also like to have a nice wet piece of paper towel here to put the lid on. So, what we're going to do here, we do two plates. Hopefully, we get good clean ones out of them. Wiping this bad boy here. You want to avoid touching any of those, you know, because they're sterile, so, okay. Now I'm really, I'm going to push a little bit out just so it's already in there, even though it's in here, okay. I'm gonna take the lid off, we're gonna rest it on here. It's nice and clean there, lots of alcohol, super wet, not worried about it, all right. I'm gonna take this off. Now, gently, we're gonna, you know what be too far of the plate? I'm gonna put a couple of drops on there. And that's it, right? I'm gonna put this back on, got us done. Same thing for the next one. Oh, cool. You see that one kind of got away from me. There's a bunch of squirt up there, so we'll see if that happens. All right, and that's it. And that's how you get the sports syringe on there. And then you can close this back up. Put the lid back on it. 
save it for later. All right, guys. So finally, what we're going to be talking about is the spore print. All right, you usually get these on foil or on paper or something like that. This is a beautiful specimen. And as you can see all the detail, there's literally millions of spores in this piece of foil board. Um, you could use this time and time and time and time again, and it'll store for years. <clears throat> so spore prints are a great way to keep genetics for a really long time. They store really well. Just throw them in your refrigerator. They'll last years and years and years. So again, same deal. We're going to be using a scalpel this time too, so we're going to clean this bad boy first. All right. So we use dipper right here on the other one. And the torch was sterilizing blade, right? I'm gonna heat this up until it is red hot. You can use a lighter, but it takes forever. I definitely recommend a little torch. Get it nice and red. Okay, I'm calling it sterile. We'll set that here for now. <clears throat> Two ways you can do a uh, print. You can scrape spores off onto the plate with a uh, scalpel, or you can take a clean swab, swab a little bit off the plate and put it onto, or swab a little bit off of the foil and swab it and put it onto the plate, which is my preferred method. Uh, so I got to wet this down really good. But don't be shy with the alcohol. So use your friend, we're going to take a little bit of this, right? Scoop up some spores here. And we're going to streak it, just like we did the other one. Nice. Put the gold bunch of spores on there. Look like that. Go. And that's it. That's how you do that. This is very, very easy, all right? Now the next method is to use a scalpel and scrape some spores onto the plate. Now this is a little bit more difficult, I think, um, especially with the flow hood, the air kind of blows everything this way, so you gotta kind of work on the other side of the plate, which can also blow some contamination on there, so you gotta be careful. So what we're gonna do here, again, Careful not to hover over the plate. That's the big thing. Close that back up. <clears throat> now that's three different ways you can put spores to agar. Now the last thing is to seal them up and put them somewhere for a couple of days. On this particular agar recipe, I typically see germination within three to seven days. Um, it, it works really well. And again, I'll, I'll do a video on this particular recipe and how to make it. It's very easy. I actually got the recipe from Willie Maiko. Shout out to Willie. A lot of good information on that dude's channel. So I like to use grafting tape to wrap these up. You can use parafilm, but it's quite expensive. Over time, it will dry out and crack. Uh, and it also likes to stick to each other. So if you have a pile of plates, the parafilm will like stick to each other and it'll rip apart. And I, I just, I use it for a long time. This has changed the game for me. Um, it's basically like saran wrap, but it comes in little rolls. It's way cheaper than parafilm. Uh, and I use it for everything now. So you just take this, wrap it up. stuff works great. Again, you can find it for like under 10 bucks, for like four rolls. This shit will last you forever. And I would check back with you guys in about five days, probably. <clears throat> I'll do a couple of uh, updates on my Instagram. Uh, if you guys aren't following me there, it's Microdose New York. Yeah, 
So uh, I hope you learned something today. Uh, I will put links to all the stuff I use, all the tools, um, all the ingredients for the agar. Everything I use, I'm going to put links to in the comments so you guys can pick this stuff up. It was, it'll save you a lot of money doing a lot of this stuff yourself instead of buying it from someone all the time. It's really not hard to do a lot of this stuff, making the agar. Um, so definitely worth learning. But I hope you guys learned something. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Take it easy. If you like this, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Uh, appreciate you guys. Later.